Welcome back to the Vintage Super League. Uh, we've got Rich Shea and myself, who were the uh, participants of a not very eventful match. I, I, I got, just got destroyed there. I don't think I came close to doing anything. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty intense, and I had some very difficult calls, and I don't know if I played that as well as Greg Fenton would have played that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what a Greg uh, Fenton is, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, Greg Fenton built the deck that I was playing today. Ah, okay, okay. That makes uh, sense then. <laughs> I, uh, I had, yeah. I, I was preparing for this match. I was uh, testing with uh, Danny Batterman. I was testing with Vasu, and I was uh, going over how to sideboard. And uh, what I found was the cards I wanted to bring in were uh, abrupt decays. They and the card that I was most afraid of out of out of your deck is actually uh, Dak Faden. In testing, um, I, in games, I think I was uh, twelve and four. And every game, well, all three of the four games I lost were to Dak himself. Um, yeah, yeah, Dak, Dak is decent. I mean, the matchup's pretty bad because I'm playing a deck that is a little slower than a normal Delver deck because it has less kill conditions and had less sideboard cards than normal against Oath because I just didn't expect to play against Oath. So I think the matchup is, yeah, pretty firmly in your favor. And then it kind of played out that way where I, I never, again, never really got anything going. I, I guess I never even cast a gush or anything, so <laughs> no, it, it, it was not the most competitive. You never cast a gush. You never resolved a, a draw spell, I don't think. Um, uh, I drew some cards off preordained, but that's it. Yes, yeah, I, 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 I got out. I got outdrawn pretty severely, which is part of the part part of the challenge. Though I guess that that's the arena where I think my deck is ahead. But the fact that I was losing the draw battle meant that uh, yeah. there's no way I was going to win. So. Right. I think your plan against me is to drag me into the deep end of the pool and drown me. And um, if if you can't do that, you know you're, you're built to be better in the mid to late game than I am, and I'm built to present early threats to you. So if if I'm drawing better than you, then that's that's not going to work out. And you never got a you never got the uh, the DAC going either, which is which is huge in all my testing. Yeah. So that. Well, my match went unfortunately how I was expecting. So uh, now we're moving on to an, another pretty big match. Here. We've got uh, Tom Martell against Eric Froelich. So we're going to head down to the match. We've got uh, right. Eric on Dredge, which is, again, 0 and 8 right now. The Eric's wheels have completely fallen off the zombie wagon this time. Oh, yeah. The zombie wagon doesn't sound like it's built very well. And uh, <laughs> it, it, in fact, is uh, is not doing a whole lot. Though, I mean, these last Eric's last two matches against me and Bob, I think he was significantly far ahead in both the game and the match and just didn't convert. He's trying to win on turns two or three by using Bizarre Baghdad and Dredge cards to flip over his deck. So pretty single-minded strategy. We'll see if right. that uh, works Most against... Bizarre, find Bizarre, tap Bizarre. Exactly. Tom's is a little more complicated, but actually still pretty single-minded in that... It really wants to just cast Doomsday and stack its deck with the perfect five cards. Most of them, which are uh, most of those piles, involve Laboratory Maniac, Gush, Cataxian Probe, Ancestral. So, right, well, the, the games will be a little more interactive post board. Tom doesn't have a ton though. He has those no. two ley lines of the Void. Yeah, so he does not have a whole lot. Uh, Eric has got one card in hand. It's an Archimeba, and Tom's hand is quite good. So. <laughs> yeah. The old Narco Amoeba, nothing else hand is not a very powerful hand. It's not going to do much it's to give the zombies a match. Whereas Ancestral with some other draw and some backup and Doomsday itself, that's a good hand. So it's, it's yeah, looking it's, good for Tom Martell here. It's Tom with, a, with, I think, a fairly good hand. Uh, even against Dredge, this is a pretty good hand. Ancestral, Doomsday on the play with Force of Will. I, I think Doomsday is a slight favored against like a, a five card dredge hand that has bizarre eric's got a yeah. one card hand with no bizarre right exactly i i think uh, uh cmu math wizard jd near did the odds again and it came to about a six percent chance that dredge will mulligan into oblivion and it appears that that's happened yet again um to the dredge deck here and it drew a land, and unfortunately, it's not the Arabian Nights well, land that Ephra was hoping for. If you looked at Tom's hand, he drew Dark Ritual on another land. Yeah. Tom actually had a turn two kill with Force of Will back up there. So even if Eric had drawn a, a Bazaar in his opening hand, I think Tom would still probably have won that game. Right, right. So, Luck, Luckily for Eric, 
normally, you know, Dredge is like a pretty big favorite game one and becomes a lot tougher post board. The mm -hmm. matchup doesn't change all that much. Tom brings in two Leyline of the Void, which, yeah, they're clearly great, great cards, but it's not like the matchup changes dramatically. It's not like Tom's board right. against, you know, five to seven cards. If you look at a lot of decks, they'll often have six, seven cards against Dredge, and um, I, I think that it would not be safe to take two Dredge hate cards into a paper real life vintage tournament. But no. um, it, it's a more reasonable gamble that people in the, the VSL won't be on Dredge. I think you had two anti-Dredge cards in your sideboard, right? I did, yeah. I was not, I was not planning on a whole lot of Dredge. Though against the way Ephra's uh, Dredge deck is performing yeah. and everyone's, two is more than enough. <laughs> well, right. Two, two Ley Lines is perfectly sufficient to defeat Narco Amoeba and nothing else. So, Eric can change his deck a little bit. He can uh, bring in a couple answers to Leyline. I mean, he knows Tom has the two Leylines. He doesn't want to right. just scoop to them. But it's not like Eric's strategy is going to change really in any way either. No, that's, that's true. Um, a lot of the time, Dredge is is on the win game one and then try to win one of the next two games. Um, here, winning game one didn't work. And in general, Dredge is in a really tough spot if it fails to win the first game. It can win the subsequent two games, and I think that's helped all the more here. Now, now this is a much better Dredge hand. Yeah, this On is an hand, excellent hand for Dredge. This is also an excellent hand for Tom Martell. If Tom hits the second land, he's going to be able to play Fast Bond and then Gush. And, of course, with Fast Bond out, Gush is basically Necro for two on the spot and get two mana for your troubles. Yeah, Tom is going to be able to... He has to probe into any land, and if he does, his hand, yeah, is very explosive. He could potentially draw, uh, you know, the, a combination of cards which let him win on turn one here. Without, you know, it's not that implausible. Absolutely. I mean, if he he has the gush, if he hits the land, and he has the doomsday in hand. M mental so, misstep, not really what he wanted, even though it does counter one of Euphro's spells. Um, mental misstep is, is a card that I love against Dredge in general, though, because... Um, most of the cards that Dredge brings in after sideboarding are hit by Mental Misstep. And that's one of the reasons I like running four Mental Missteps. They're good against all the countermeasures, or at least a significant number of the countermeasures that Dredge has. Nature's Claim, a, chalice, a Chain of Vapor. They don't hit uh, elementals like Ingot Chewer, but they hit a sizable number of the cards. So Tom didn't draw land, he drew a Sensei's Top. So I would imagine Tom's play now is to get a Tropic Island and cast Sensei's Divining Top. Though, I, yeah, I guess you could get an Underground Sea here. Well, but I think I, it depends on what he plans to do. If he gets, if he plays the Trop now and then he uses Top on his upkeep, he'll not have. He'll either have to fetch out another green source. Yeah, I, I actually yeah. Like getting the Sea here better. Yeah, I I would I imagine that's a, that's slightly better. Tom does have a, a fair suite of counter magic here, though he doesn't have a lot of time. If Tom can't find a land this turn, then I think Ephra is just going to be able to power through this Force of Will. Right. I mean, Force of Will, counter magic in general, is of very limited value against the zombie horde. Yeah. Um, and Ephra, especially with, you know, dumping dredgers in his graveyard and bizarring on upkeep here, has a pretty good shot of getting to resolve a Cabal Therapy, this, this, or at least cast a Cabal Therapy, not necessarily absolutely. resolve it. There's a perfectly reasonable chance of this game not proceeding to another turn here. Yeah, and Ifra did hit at least one bridge, two therapies, and an Archimiba, and that's without even hitting his draw step yet. So, Tom Tom's hand is going to take a beating right now. So Ifra puts an Archimiba into play. He's going to get to dredge on his draw step. He really just needs to hit more bridges at this point. Right, and dredge is one of the few decks, probably the only deck in Vintage, that's uh, capable of winning without casting a single spell, which it, it makes it good against counter magic and good against the Mishra's Workshop decks that are keen on precluding your casting spells. Exactly. And so Ephra is going to put some spells on the stack here, and I would imagine Tom wants to misstep the first therapy, especially since the first therapy oh, so, so so frequently names Force of Will. <laughs> right, right. I, I think that there's a good chance that he'll force the second uh, therapy. And Ephra looks like he has t t two Cabal Therapies, two Bridges. So Tom is presumably going to get a turn here, but doesn't get a whole lot of time to do to do much on that turn. Does he have a, uh, 
a dread return in his graveyard? Does not look like it, no. Okay. So it, if things go according to, you know, one of our guesses, Tom goes mental misstep the first therapy, potentially force the second, but either way, a pretty good shot of getting all the forces out. And then Ifro still has Chain of Vapor or Nature's Claim for the Fast Bond, which is one of the things Tom needs to go off here. Right, and leaving leaving that bit of counter magic, or sorry, that bit of disruption open from Ifro is going to let him take Tom off that. Yeah, and I, I imagine he's going to. He's got nothing better to do with it. Right. Uh, getting rid of the top doesn't seem all that great since it can be exchanged for a card in response. Yeah, and you don't know what Tom's hand is unless you see it with therapy, of course. But again, Tom has a decent incentive to force a will this year. I, I would force a will this year. Um, there's, there's too much potential for disaster otherwise. Well, if it resolves in and Ifro names Force of Will, you're slightly worse off because then Ifro gets to see the rest of your hand. If you let it resolve and Ifro misses, of course, that's much better. But yeah, Tom, I think wisely yeah. Force of Will is here. But, but if Ifro names something like Gush, that, that it's wouldn't so be... It's so much worse for Tom. Name, yeah. That's just terrible for Tom. Right. So now Tom has to maybe just draw for his turn and then tap top to draw a card. I might so, just look at... Just get to take the top two here. Yeah, I. Oh, so it looks like he got a preordain. I, I, if he had gotten the underground sea, I would have liked uh, looking on his upkeep. Then he's just looking for a green source, any island that produces green, which yeah. I guess is a fetch under a tropical island. <laughs> and now he has the tropical island, so he can play fast bond. He can gush. Um, I'd be amazed if Ephra weren't keen on on getting rid of that yeah, fast bond as he, soon as gush goes. Is, on. You throw nature's claims here in response. Barring, barring this gush producing something astounding, this should. Uh... Yeah, even like I guess Lotus, I guess a Lotus, Lotus actually actually might do it with a top in play. Lotus could do it on account of the top. So, but that is not going to do it. So now Tom has to just pass the turn. I guess he can probe well, no, into he Lotus. Can, he can try to hit Lotus off this. It would be pretty funny if he if he ended up hitting Lotus. Uh, Just because that—that's the way these matches have gone. Tom isn't technically dead here, but I would be pretty surprised if Efro wasn't able to, at the very least, present lethal. And uh, even if Efro doesn't win this turn or therapy this turn, Tom still has nothing on his next turn. Right. It, it's not deterministic, but no. it's, uh, it doesn't. It, it looks like we're going to get to enjoy a third game of this match. Dredge is going to win a game, which is momentous. <laughs> It's been a while, and if, if the zombies were capable of joy, they'd be happy. So Ifo gets another Narcomoeba here. He does not get to get his blood guests back, because he does not have a Dakmore Salvage in his graveyard to, to dredge. That's a nice little bit of value. But ifro has got more than enough creatures in play. Oh, he hit another Narcomoeba on his draw step Narcomoeba, here. Yeah. Narcomoeba, you want it on the stack, not in your hand. So, Ifro gets one Cabal Therapy here, so he's just got to name something. I don't hate naming Doomsday in the dark here. Obviously, we can see the hand, but Doomsday is right. one of the cards that can actually kill you. Right. Doomsday is a very scary card. Um... Of course, Ifro is going to, because of Fate Stitcher, is going to get a chance to, to just win this turn also, if he can hit a Dread Return off of untapping Bazaar, using Bazaar, and getting to see a ton more cards. Right. So how many cards does he have left? Uh, looks like he throws something like 15, 18. So he's going to be able to dredge two Golgari Grave Tolls, so that's 12. So there's a good chance that uh, he could name Camel if he wanted and it wouldn't make a difference. This is true. Though I guess good form is to name Force of Will again just to make sure. Mm-hmm. I like that. And it looks like Dreader Turn got hit. So... Soon going to be zombie time. Tom does get to see how Ephra boarded, which is a bunch of nature's claims, still has the mental missteps and unmasks, so nothing hugely surprising. Right, I, I think that uh, a lot of the time the dredge player will board out his ability to uh, dread return, but I think against Doomsday it's it's very reasonable that Ephra not do that, not only on account of the very minimal sideboarding that Tom has to do, but also because 
Doomsday is one of those few decks in Vintage that's actually capable of racing Dredge. It is. And uh, we, we almost saw that that game. Had Tom drawn a, an island on his first turn, the game, that game would have been completely different because Tom yes. would have been able to, to play a bunch of stuff. <laughs> right. And who knows where that would have taken him. He would have been able to get a bunch of mana, draw a bunch of cards. Um, but now we get to enjoy a third game. So. <laughs> and in, in the chat earlier, Kai was like, why are we wasting time playing games one and two? We know Ephra's going to mold a zero game three. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, so far that's what we've seen. So we'll, we'll, we're going to get to go to a game three. Doomsday on the play with only two ley lines. I still have to give Doomsday a slight advantage here because I think mm -hmm. the deck is pretty fast. It is. It, it, it is. Um, historically, dark ritual-based decks are actually pretty good against dredge decks because dredge relies on being the faster deck. So here we see uh, here we see Efro keeping a, a hand, and I think those are seven cards. They uh, are. He, he would exchange some number of them because he doesn't have a dredger, but he's got the bazaar, so it's kind of hard to walk away from that. You have that card from Arabian Nights. I don't think you can get rid of a hand. Too many bad things can happen, as Efro is well aware. Now but on Tom's side, um, Tom's got the turn two kill. He's got yeah, turn yeah. one Myst mystical tutor for Doomsday, untap, draw Doomsday, dark ritual. Gush into Ancestral Lotus, you know, pretty basically he already even has the Lab Man in hand. Right. And he can Ancestral into like Sapphire Brainstorm. So unless Ephro draws a lot of mental missteps, well, maybe even just one. But actually, I think Tom is going to have a m mana floating. He, Tom yeah. may, looks like he may even have extra mana potentially in his turn two to duress. So yeah, Ephro needs to hit a bunch of mental missteps is basically what this comes down to. And the best part about this for Tom is that he can just play his land to pass the turn, and then if something untoward should happen, then he can try to adjust. Though Ephra does have Unmask in his deck, so I would imagine Ephra goes immediately tap Bazaar to try to hit Unmask. I think so. I think so. Um, that's So I guess he, Ephra could Unmask the Ritual, but he can't Unmask the Mystical Tutor because Tom can respond to an Unmask with it. Though if Tom Mystical is for Doomsday, then Unmask is, you know, much, much worse for Tom's. Tom's Mystical and Upkeep player on Mental Mist up. So that's interesting. That opens him up a lot more to... Um, so that means that he can't respond to what Ephro's doing. It means that if no. Ephro does Unmask him, it'll hit a lot harder. Well, that was the wrong four mana Black Sorcery. <laughs> well, he's got two so, more tries. So he There's hit the Mental Mist up. All right, so... So far, this has been brilliantly played by Tom, playing around the uh, correct cards. So, let's say Tom taps out. Well, it gets a little trickier if Tom taps out, doesn't it? Because uh, What could he hit? So, uh, so, he could hit... So, what would he get? Basically, the question is, can Tom afford to draw Doomsday, duress, and then go Ritual Doomsday, and then Gush... And if he gushes into Lotus Ancestral, plays the Lotus, sacks it, Ancestral's into... No, Tom can still win. He can just get Lotus Petal, uh, Mox Sapphire Brainstorm, or Probe, whatever. Mm. So, so three... Right, okay. So Tom is going gonna, is gonna to win this game here. Uh, well, he given the information that we have, Tom should right. be able to win this game right now. If we... Right, right. And he's playing as though he knows... And I, I like that from Ephro because... It's your only disruptive piece. You might as well keep information from Tom. Exactly. Exactly. And he can hope that Tom doesn't go for it here, but it looks like Tom's going for it here. Yeah, Tom has this by, by, by far. Well, it was nice to see Dredge win a game. That was a good change well, of pace. It, it, it won a game against me also, but... <laughs> And we saw zero dredge hate cards in this match. We saw zero dredge hate cards in last match, and zero dredge. So dredge o three again, and I don't think a hate card ever saw play. No, no, the uh, the hate card was well. Ephra mauled into oblivion quite a bit. In this game, he mauled into a doomsday. Looks like he found the line that'll. Put this away for Tom here, and now it's just. Uh, but 
you know, it makes perfect sense for Tom to double, triple, quadruple check that he's doing this right. Certainly, and Doomsday, you know, I've talked about this before, but Doomsday is one of the the most <laughs> tricky decks to play in that even when you have a guaranteed win and you're doomsdaying, you're, you're always like petrified of misclicks because if you misclick, you're done. Right. Like you're right. choosing every single card that you'll see the last, you know, right. turn of the and game. That's true. When you're resolving doomsday, if you haven't had the joy of resolving a doomsday, um, the cards actually move around as you click on them. So I know it's on insane. A card, <laughs> then all the cards decide to completely move around. Um, so, the card that you might have wanted to click on might be somewhere else. Maybe, you know, it's been replaced by a swamp. So, uh, resolving Doomsday is not not great. It's, how would you rate that compared to resolving Flusterstorm? Flusterstorm, I've managed to do it a few times. I guess I've managed to do both. So, yeah, they're both kind of tricky. Flusterstorm's not as bad, even though sometimes I guess the stakes are as high. Flusterstorm, uh, a lot of the time you'll have a bunch of extra... Uh, Flusterstorm copies, so even if you m mess up on one or two, you're fine. Doomsday, if you misclick once, you're pretty much dead. More of a margin for error, that makes sense. Yeah. So we're going to see a Lotus and a Gitaxian Probe, and then it doesn't really matter what the last card is. There's... This is one of the coolest win conditions ever printed, Laboratory Maniac. And Laboratory we... Maniac is pretty cool, and uh, <laughs> there we have it. <laughs> Dredge <laughs> completes the sweep. There it goes. Well... The sweep, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Tom is no longer going to be last place. In fact, everyone who Dave wanted to lose, I think, won. So, except Steve. So now it's down to Steve, Bob, and Dave, if Bob wins. If, if Dave, Bob wins, right. And as Dave said, sorry, if, Dave, if, fates, if Dave wins. His if, fate's in his hands now. Yes, Dave, if, Dave, if Dave loses, he is out. So. Right. And uh, if if he wins, then there are three people in the tiebreaker. Correct. There's uh, Bob, Dave, and then and Steve. So we've got a pretty high stakes match coming up here. I think this is the highest stakes one of the day because uh, the top four was locked coming into this week. Now, of course, uh, we have Chris Bakula at the one seed with me, Ifro, and Randy fighting for the the th you know two through four seed, but. Bob and Dave get to battle to stay in the league. If Dave loses, he is out. If Dave wins, there Bob has another shot, as does Dave, as does Steve. So we'll be back in a few minutes with that match. Exciting match.